in Charleston, South Carolina, visiting with Bill Ledan at his beautiful house in downtown Charleston. Bill, it's a treat to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's wonderful having you here. Um, you've had an interesting career and lived a lot of places, so give us a little background about your life before you came here. Yeah, I lived kind of all over the place. A long time in, in New York, in Los Angeles, Chicago, Minneapolis, in the advertising business. Uh, came here in 1977, absolutely loved it. No real jobs in advertising here, but um, we came back in 2010 and we love it. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. I think that you really are a general contractor at heart. Tell our viewers how many homes you have redone. We have done uh, in Los Angeles, Connecticut, here 18 houses. And in Charleston itself? Four. This is number four. And we've, we've been here just about 10 years. <laughs> have you, do you know where your, where, where your toothbrush is at night now? Uh, I hope I do, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, um, we love the, the old, we love old houses, old things, antiques, and this is, uh, I got a lot of them. Well, you have a, what I think is a manageable garden, um, right. but when you came here, there was no way to get up to the main floor of the house, so let's talk about the stairs and why they are so different looking from what would have been the stairs here. Yes, exactly. When, when we bought the house, um, we were told that this house probably had a set of stairs to the main floor mm -hmm. because when we bought the house, you, you entered through a small entrance with two small bedrooms. We realized that there probably were stairs. Now, there was a huge earthquake here in 1886. The entire front of the, the building was lost. Oh. And this is all new piazza. And you can tell that because it's a Victorian style. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go to the Board of Architectural Review and they were very nice about it. And they said, yes, you, could, you can put in new stairs which we did, and that kind of dictated the entire garden because everything came off the stairs. And I was telling you earlier, Chakora Wood, which is a beautiful plantation up near Myrtle Beach, was kind of our inspiration for the style of it. And uh, it, you know, it worked out very well. Interesting that you said, although you think everything would have to be just correct and relate to right. the period, that's not the current style. So let's talk about why these stairs are not exactly yes. copies of what would have been there. Exactly. The current thinking in preservation, uh, and this is throughout the country, is that you don't want to recreate something that was there if it wasn't. It, if, if it wasn't there originally, it has to be look like, frankly, it's new and added on. So in the, this is the case. Now the style of it comes from a Chakora wood, which is very traditional, but it's in cement as opposed to wood. They don't want to kind of fool the eye and, and add a reproduction elements onto these old houses. So that's, that's how we approached it. It's still, we think, very pretty, uh, and it's still graceful, um, but it is technically um, uh, new in style. And it's also not attached to the house. Technically, it's not attached to the house, although it looks like it is, um, but it's a, it's a traditional house with a traditional style staircase. But actually, it almost serves as a statue In a way or it a does. piece of art, exactly. don't you think, to exactly. anchor the garden? Exactly, and that's the way the BAR felt about it. They said, you know, this is going to be a major, major element in your garden, which, which it is. So it kind of dictated all the geometry of the garden itself. And we created what we basically call a French-style parterre garden with gravel walkways. But it all comes off the stairs so that you can you know, gracefully go up to the main floor of the house and then still enjoy the garden at the same time. And reveal, conceal is a little bit, I believe, the way the fountain is located. Yes, the, you know, the Japanese theory of gardening is that you don't want to see everything in one view. You want to be surprised and be able to kind of discover various parts of the garden as you walk around it, and, that, and that's the case. We wanted to have a fountain, and we wanted the noise of the fountain, the sound of it was so wonderful. But we didn't necessarily want to have a major thing in the middle of everything. So we wound up putting it next to the, uh, the staircase, and you can, you can hear it, but not necessarily see it. And it really blends beautifully with the somewhat contemporary aspect of the stairs, because it's a very contemporary thing. It is, and you know, we, we found it on the internet, and uh, it's made in, uh, in Pennsylvania. It was absolutely perfect. We had a, a spot for it, did a lot of research, and I said, that's it. You know, and, and we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we bought it, had it brought here. It's extremely heavy. Put it in place and looked like it had always been there. And you um, are interested in timepieces, I understand. You actually have a watch on. Yes. Um, that's, that's a digital watch. Yes. Um, 
And you have a timepiece in the garden? Uh, well, we have, a, we have, yes we do. It's called an armillary, which is a fancy name for a sundial. Oh. And uh, again, we found that on the internet. And it, it's, you'll see when the pictures that it, it's a nice complement to the stairs. It gives you a little bit of elevation. Uh, and it's, you know, it's very authentic. It's very kind of Charlestonian in nature. And you said also the wall at the very end was not what you wanted to be the closure of your view, I think. Exactly. Does the armillary serve as a place for your eye to rest? Exactly. You know, everything is a matter of perspective in gardening. And you want, normally you want symmetry. You want the eye to be calm. And you want the, your, your view to go somewhere. And ultimately, we thought the, your view could stop at the armillary. And I think it does. And interesting plant material, you were fortunate in that you have some marvelous shade trees. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we have some beautiful live oaks, which is classic uh, low country. Messy. Uh, huh? They're messy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely, they're messy. Oh, God, they, they lose leaves constantly. Um, but we have um, se seven very, very nice olive trees. Yes. Uh, and also, you'll see four beautiful, beautiful, pretty rare tree form azaleas, uh, which are, you know, just add a whole different dimension to a garden. It's quite, quite a different look for an azalea. And you were able, actually, through the help of a very accomplished horticulturist gardener, to save some of the original plant material, although this design is completely different. And your design, because you like to garden and do yeah. things yourself. Yeah, we, we, love, uh, we love design, we love art and so on. And, Robert O'Dell, is our, our landscaper, did a marvelous job of saving the boxwoods because when we bought this house, there were 33 beautiful boxwoods in the ground. And normally when you transplant, you're always taking mm -hmm. risks. And we had these four beautiful tree form azaleas also in the ground. He was able to save them all and put them back in the earth a year later. Gosh. It's, it was a good job on his part. And although um, color can be a lot of fun, in this garden, in order, I think, partially perhaps because of its size and also your inspiration, this is mostly one color as far as flower material. That's right. We, we like green and white, uh -huh. you know, and, and I was saying earlier, it's like a, a black dress with white pearls. It's classic. It always looks good. And we, we think it's the same thing in, with the garden. It's, it's calming. There's many different shades of green, of course, and many different shades of white. But the uniformity, we think, is pleasing to the eye, at least for us. I would think that these boxwoods and all that are so well established don't require as much irrigation and you do not have a lawn i don't see any lawn at we all we have no lawn we didn't want a lawn we wanted it to be very classic french with a limestone walkways uh simple um and we we hope elegant uh we have drip irrigation which is great it's a great way to save water and uh, you'll you'll notice this huge big podocarpus hedge that was created with 22 massive podocarpus oh. from florida Big, big job to put those in. They're all drip irrigated. So, uh, you know, it conserves water. And yes. uh, they, they seem to be doing fine. Well, it was interesting because when we first tried to start filming, there was a lot of mow and blow and noise coming. Yes. And this garden actually contributes to the quiet. We hope so. Of the neighborhood. We hope so. I, I think, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's nice to have a quiet environment, to read a book, just to enjoy the, the, uh, the beautiful nature here. Before we close, I want to ask you, this flag looks like it doesn't have a lot of stars on it. Is there a story behind that? There is. This house was built in 1835. In 1835, there, the American flag was 24 stars. And that's what this is, a 24-star flag. And you can, thanks to the Internet, you can find that out and you can go buy it. <laughs> well, Bill Ladan, I am happy that although you have an appreciation for history, you also have brought this wonderful house into the more modern times well, in such a you. graceful and beautiful way well, and my, the garden too. Thank you and my, a big credit to my wife Hildy. Uh, it's fun. We, we love it. It's, it's, uh, we love these old houses and uh, you know we're stewards of them and we, we hope we can add something to the beauty of Charleston. Charleston is very fortunate that you've made this your home. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We're happy to be here.